हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस नाउ लर्न सम इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट मिड डे मील प्रोग्राम इन मिड डे मील प्रोग्राम इट इज पुट फॉरवर्ड इन 1961 दैट इज हैज स्कूल लंच प्रोग्राम स्कूल लंच प्रोग्राम स्कूल लंच प्रोग्राम द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू अट्रैक्ट मोर चिल्ड्रन फॉर एडमिशन टू स्कूल्स इन ऑर्डर टू मेंटेन प्रॉपर लिटरेसी रेट literacy improvement in children the main aim is that though the the patients will that sorry the children will at least come to the schools for food for proper food in below socio economic status uh, families so in this mid day meal program the meal provided here is a supplement but not a substitute it is supplementary the this meal constitute 1 by 3 of total energy requirement mid day meal constitute 1 by 3 of total energy requirement and half of total protein requirement this mid day meal program is under the ministry of education according to national institute of nutrition minimum feeding the minimum number of feeding days in a year feeding days in a year for desired impact on children is 250 days minimum all the children should be fed at least for 250 days for have good, for having good impact on the children's nutritional status that is mid day meal program recently this mid day meal program we have mid, we have supplemented it with mid day meal scheme mid day meal scheme is national program nutritional support to primary education which is put forward in 1995 it is put forward in 1995 main objective is universalization of primary education the main objective is to universalize the primary education and we have to increase the enrollment retention and attendance of children into the schools and it is also important to provide nutrition to the child with the help of this mid day meal program it will provide one third of total energy requirement and it will also provide half of total protein requirement so principles of mid day meal scheme include the meal provided here is supplementary not a substitute the meal provided here should be low cost and easily uh, given it should be used locally and it we should use locally available food and we should keep changing the menus frequently to help the children to have good balanced healthy happy diet then uh, nutritional status assessment so here we have put forward some important uh, criteria for assessing the dietary intake the assessment of dietary intake can be done by diet survey that is dietary cycle dietary cycle is here we weigh the raw foods which we take for 7 days then assessment of nutritional status of an individual can be done by following examination first by clinical examination second important is by anthropometry that is height weight bmi and the midarm circumference for children calculation and third in lab calculab laboratory like hemoglobin estimation stool and urine uh biochemical tests can be done for nutritional status we can do functional assessment can be done next vital and health statistics can also be uh taken into account we have to take into account the ecological studies which include socio economic factors health and educational services and also we will have to take into account the conditioning influx influences so then recently the government of india has also started food fortification 
फूड फोर्टिफिकेशन इज ए पब्लिक हेल्थ मेजर इन फूड फोर्टिफिकेशन वी टेक द फूड विच इज कॉमनली कंज्यूम्ड इन द कम्युनिटी एंड वी एड न्यूट्रियट्स टू इट दिस इज डन टू मेंटेन और इम्प्रूव द क्वालिटी ऑफ डाइट इन ए ग्रुप और पॉपुलेशन और ए कम्युनिटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल if years back india is an endemic country for goiter so due to iodine deficiency in order to overcome that government of india has started the program of iodinization of salt salt is commonly consumed commodity by every one so the government of india has started um, adding iodine to salt similarly vitamin a and vitamin d are added to 100 grams of vanaspati oil Vitamin A is in twenty two thousand five hundred international units, and one seventy five international units of vitamin D are added. Fluoridation of water can also be done. In primary level, so all these comes under primary level of prevention. Criteria of these are of fortification include the cost of fortification should be affordable, the vehicle of fortification must be consumed regularly. in the diet for example here salt water and vanaspati are produ- are consumed regularly amount of nutrient should be should resolve the deficiency but does not cause toxicity so it should be in sufficient amounts such that it should not cause toxicity on addition of nutrients no change in taste odor consistency or appearance of the substance should be there there should not be any change in taste odor or consistency because if the taste or odor or anything changes then that will make the food not prob- not easily edible in the society then we have nutritional surveillance nutritional surveillance is watch over the nutrition of the people to improve the nutrition of population the main strategy is to detect malnutrition here we have to detect malnutrition the approach here is to first we will have to approach it and then we will have to diagnose and then we will have to intervene the problem the sample size which we take is 50 to 100 people are taken and uh, objectives of this and we will survey the nutritional status of those people objectives is to aid health and development to provide input for program management and evaluation to policy makers we have to provide input to policy makers such that they can change the present existing things and the objective is to give timely warning and intervention to prevent any crisis so this is about nutritional surveillance so these are the different schemes and different uh, uh, programs which were put forward by the government to make sure that the people are not nutritionally deficient or to overcome the nutritional deficiencies of the people thank you guys for watching my lecture thank you